stars and bars, sticks and stones, lentils and pencils, balls and walls, they're all names for the same technique that's extremely useful in combinatorics. Let's explore how we can use this technique. Let's start off with a simple example. We've got to distribute eight identical pencils to three people. So eight pencils, and we're trying to distribute them to three people. So by default, we assume the people are different, right? Because um, people are hopefully not all the same. So we've got eight pencils to distribute to those three people. How can we do this? So we could do casework. So the key thing here is that the pencils are identical. And there's three people, let's say A, B, C. Those are their names. So A, B, C have to distribute eight identical pencils amongst them. The key thing is this identical kind of condition here. So what we could try doing is casework. We could say something like, oh, person A gets one pencil, person B gets three pencils, person C gets four pencils, or person A gets two pencils, three pencils, three pencils. That's gonna take a long time. So let's try to find something simpler. So the key idea here is that because we're dividing amongst three people, we can what we can do is draw two bars. Sounds crazy, right? Two bars. Why are we drawing two bars? So the key thing here is that when we draw two bars, now the pencils are separated into three regions. There is a region the left of the first bar, the region in between both bars, and the region to the right of the second bar. Okay, what if we instead drew the bars like this? Now, there's one pencil to, to, to the left of the first bar, seven in between the second and third bars, and zero to the right of the third bar. So in this case, the first person would get one pencil, the second person would get seven pencils, the third person would get zero pencils. Essentially, for any location of the two bars, we can divide them into three regions. Person A, B, C. And for every unique placing of the two bars, person A, B, and C will get different numbers of pencils. So to count the number of ways to distribute this, we can also just count the number of ways to place two bars amongst eight pencils. Isn't that cool? So how many ways are there to do this? Put two bars amongst eight pencils. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Notice how we have eight pencils and two bars. So essentially, let's say we have ten slots. And from these slots, let's say we select two of them to be bars. So ten choose two ways to do this. Ten slots, select two of them for bars. This is ten times nine over two factorial, which is 45. So the answer for this problem is 45. Okay, so there's this general formula for stars and bars. If we're distributing n objects into k kind of sections, we can just draw from those n objects, we can draw k minus 1 bars. So it's just going to be n plus k minus 1 to then. But seriously, you don't have to memorize this formula. In fact, I still haven't really memorized it. You can just use the logic to construct this situation and it's much easier. And it's important to understand why this is true. Because it won't always just be a direct application of the formula. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit more tricky. By the way, you can check out all of those written examples like, like I was showing here. Detailed solution, not just solutions, more like explanations where I try to explain more than just the solution, the thought process behind them. You can get all of those in the free Mastering AMC at Book. The link is in the description. How many ways are there to choose positive integers A, B, C, and D such that A plus B plus C plus D is less than 13? Hmm, so you might be wondering, wait, I thought we we're supposed to distribute Wait, it's not inequality. We're not solving inequality problems with stars and bars. How do we do this? And this is the cleverness that we have to use when applying stars and bars. So what can the sum a plus b plus c plus d even equal to? Well, they're positive integers. So at the very least, 
it's going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. At the very least, it's going to be 4. It can't be lower than 4. Okay, what, what about at the most? At the most, it's going to be less than 13, so, well, 12. Hmm, so there's 9 cases, and that's going to be a hard to evaluate. Even if we could use stars and bars for each case. That's going to be a little bit mm -mm, too hard. Maybe? Oh, wait. So it seems like we're just... Each time, like, there, it's all of these values are less than 13. So each time, it's just, like, it's almost like this is going to be 13 minus something. Right? So A plus B plus C plus D could be 13 minus 9. It could be 13 minus 8. All the way till 13 minus 1. Right? It's the same thing, essentially. Right? Because we're saying it's less than 13. This is interesting, right? 13 minus 9, 13 minus 8. It almost seems like we can move the 9 to the other side, right? It almost seems like we have 9 plus A plus B plus C plus C is 13. And we have that 8 plus A plus B plus C plus D is 13. And we have that 1 plus A plus B plus C plus C is 13. Which is it's almost like another variable here. Maybe it's B? Maybe we have E plus A plus B plus C plus D is 13, maybe? Where E is some number between 1 and 9? Hmm. Oh! E is at least 1, at most 9. What about A? Well, A is at least 1, of course, and if, can A, A is also at most 9, because B, C, and D are each at least 1, and A, the sum is at most 12. So A is also at most 9, and at least 1. C is also at most 9, at least 1. B is also at most 9, and at least 1. It seems like, oh, stars and bars. So what we're going to do here, and this is the cleverness of the solution, let's define another variable, E. So now, essentially, what we're going to say is that A plus B plus C, plus D, plus E is 13, where E is a positive integer, right? So the, like, the reason this is true is now we have A plus B plus C plus D plus 1 is 13, which, which satisfies A plus B plus C plus D is less than 13. We also have A plus B plus C plus D plus 2 equals 13, which also satisfies this condition. Or we can have plus 3 equals 13, or all the way till plus n 9 equals 13. It seems like it encompasses all possibilities that satisfy this inequality. And it's just like we added an extra variable. So now, instead of having to deal with a bunch of cases, we just added an another variable, which is also a positive integer, by the way, just to be clear. It's also a positive integer. The reason it's positive is if it was 0, then a plus B plus C plus D could be equal to 13, and that's not allowed. It's strictly less than 13. So it satisfies all our conditions. So it's just like distributing 13 amongst five variables. And all of them are positive integers, right? A, B, and C, and D are positive integers. E is a positive integer as well. So how many ways are there to do this? We can imagine maybe 13 stars. I'm not going to draw all of them. You got the idea. Okay. And we've got five variables, so draw four bars. Nice big bars. Cool. So, but the condition positive. So, in generally stars and bars, we could just have two bars like this, and then star, star, bar, bar, where there's, it's, it's allowed, you're allowed to give zero. Like in the previous example, remember how we were allowed to give zero pencils to one person by having two bars adjacent to each other, or there's no, no pencil to the left of the first bar, or third, no pencil to the right of the third bar. So there could be nothing here, there could be nothing here, or there could be nothing here. But in this case, it's positive integers. So let's just say that we, we each, each section has to have at least one star, right? So we have these 
four bars we're choosing, there has to be at least one star in each section because they're positive integers, right? We're distributing these kind of 13 things to five variables. There has to be at least one for each variable because they're positive. Okay, so what we're going to do is, it's a standard stars and bars trick. If all these are positive, we can just give one to all of them. And now we have, let's say something else, maybe a big A, uppercase A, plus uppercase B, plus uppercase C, plus uppercase D, plus uppercase E, equal to eight. Where uppercase A, uppercase A is just little a minus one. So what we're essentially doing is subtracting four from both sides of the equations. We know A, B, C, D, and E must all be positive, one or more. So we subtract one from each of these vari variables. We, we end up with this equation here. And now that we subtracted one, now each of these variables don't have to be positive, just zero or more. So it's essentially the same thing as distributing eight things amongst five regions, essentially. And now instead of having 13 stars, now let's just say we have eight stars. And now it's just a standard stars and bars drill. We can distribute them however we like. We can leave some sections blank if we choose to. I promise drawing stars is harder than it looks. Okay, so now essentially it's the same thing. We've got 13 sections, right? We've got nine stars, four bars, so 13 sections, and we have to, to or not 13, sorry, 12 sections because four bars and eight stars. There should only be eight stars. Yeah, eight stars and four bars. So 12 kind of, you know, blanks, right? 12 kind of blanks we can choose. And from these 12 blanks, we choose four of them to be the bars. So 12 choose four is our answer. You can write this as 12, 11, 10, 9, over 24. Cancel, 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 cancel. 45 times 11 is 450 plus 45, 495. So our answer, just 495. A really cool application of stars and bars. The key idea I was seeing is that we can add another variable to get that a plus b plus c plus d plus e if e were a positive number is 13. And well, and well then, we just saw that we could subtract one from each of these variables to get this for regular stars and bars. And then after that, we just did stars and bars and got 12 choose 4. Clever idea of how we introduce the new variable. If you ask me, that's pretty clever. Okay, so now let's see. Let's take a look at this problem over here. You have 11 apples and five bananas. You place them into three baskets. How many ways are there to do this if each basket must have more apples than bananas and at least one of each fruit. Okay, three baskets, basket one, basket two, basket three. Okay, so basket one, basket two, basket three, 11 apples, five bananas. The key condition here is that we must have more apples than bananas. More apples than bananas. Hmm. Okay, let's take a possible distribution of the bananas. Let's say we have two bananas here. Okay, uh, drawing bananas is not that easy. Let's say we have two bananas here. Two bananas here. And one banana here. There must be more apples than bananas in each basket. So if there were two bananas here, there must be at least three apples here. And similarly in this basket, there must be three apples.
And this one must have at least two apples. Okay. So essentially, for each number of, for each and every number of bananas, there must come a corresponding apple and one more. Right? Okay, so five bananas. So each basket must have at least one apple, first of all. Let's get that straight off the bat. And from now on, because drawing is hard, I'll be writing A's and B's instead of drawing apples and bananas. Okay? So each basket must have an apple. Because there, each basket has to have more apples and bananas. And you can't have more apples than bananas if there's no apples, right? There has to be some apples. Okay, so there has to be some apples in each basket. And for every banana you add to the basket, you also must add an apple in order to keep that, maintain that more apples than bananas. Because if you just add a banana and don't add another apple, now there's not more apples than bananas anymore. So for every banana we add, we must also add an apple. So for each of the five bananas, we must also add an apple. So it's kind of like adding th these BA groups. We've got five banana apple groups. Banapple, let's call them banapples. I invented a new fruit today, banapple. Banapples, we've got these five banapple, bananas and apples that come together. So we must have out put these five banapples into the three baskets, right? Because whenever we add a banana, an apple must come as well. Okay, so after we add five and apples, and then we have three apples we already added, we have three apples that are still left to add. Okay, how many ways are there to do this? Hmm. Okay, first off, let's distribute the three banana apples. Five banana apples, or the five banana apples. So five banana apples and three baskets. So let's put two bars, and then let's say five BAs. This is just a classic stars and bars problem, right? Just standard stars and bars application over here. So we have five banana apple groups and seven kind of slots, right? So seven choose two, two choices, because we choose from those seven slots, two of them to be bars. Seven times six divided by two is 21. Cool. Okay, but now we've got these three apples left over we must place, right? Three apples to place. And this is also very similar. We just say apple, 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 and then two bars. So five, choose two, stars and bars. Five slots, two, two choices for each of the two bars. That's 10. So overall, it's just 21 times 10 because we have 21 choices for the banana apples, banana apples, because the bananas and apples, they must come in pairs. And then there's some additional apples that we can just add on however we'd like. And the reason, and the reason everything will be unique is because the number of bananas is just denoted by the number of BA groups. And then the number of apples is denoted by the number of banana apple groups and then additional number of apples we add on. So no matter what, Every unique combination of banana apple groups and additional apples will produce an ar unique arrangement of fruits inside the basket. So overall, our answer, that's just going to be 21 times 10, that's 210. Cool. So 210 is our final answer. This is a great problem of application of noticing how we can group these terms together, and then it was a nice clever application of stars and bars. Okay, and you can get all these practice problems in the Mastering AMC book. The link is down in the description. You can click on it right now. Okay, and geometric counting is where we're going to deal with geometric figures like octagons and counting triangles in an octagon. And we'll even explore some more interesting problems like these ones over here. But we'll be exploring this all in the next video. You can find that by clicking right over there.